How's it going everybody? Derek from Make Media Studios and this week I'm going to show you how I used After Effects Beta and Rotobrush 2.0 to create this White Claw commercial. Alright, so I was browsing YouTube the other day and I saw a tutorial that said After Effects Beta Rotobrush 2.0. I didn't even know there was an After Effects Beta, so I went and downloaded it and tried this tutorial out on Rotobrush 2.0 and then immediately used it when I created this White Claw commercial. There's many different situations that this Rotobrush tool could come in handy for you. Um, I've seen people cut out a person like on a treadmill and then put like a text message like if he's on his phone kind of behind him. So as he's running, the text message blurb is behind him and it's cut out by his shoulder. You, or you can use it for kind of what I did, which I wanted to film on a black background and I had these cans come across the screen. When I edited the final project and I just used clips of cans going across the screen, I needed them to come in faster and quicker. So I needed to get rid of that black background so that I can have them overlap each other. So that's what I did. These Each one of these cans you see going across the screen in my White Claw commercial, there is no background. The, the cans and the fruit are their own simple layer with a no, what's called an alpha. They're an alpha channel. So they're just the front image, no background. I've removed that using After Effects Beta and the Rotobrush 2.0. All right, so let's step through three parts. Let me show you where you can find After Effects Beta, how to use Rotobrush 2.0, and how to export out a Rotobrush 2.0 sequence so that you can use it in Premiere Pro. Let's get into the computer. All right, I'm on a Mac, some people might be on a PC, but at the top here, I have my Creative Cloud, okay? This is where Adobe has all their applications, everything that I've downloaded on here, and you can see the updates here on the right. I found that over here, there's beta apps. Click on beta apps. So what this has is different beta versions of applications that Adobe is working on. Before an actual official update comes out, they're gonna use these betas to kind of test um, software that they haven't fully implemented yet. So I downloaded After Effects beta, which then you also need to download Media Encoder beta because they kind of work hand in hand. That's if you're gonna render out anything, you're gonna need a Media Encoder beta because it doesn't work with the newest um, updated media encoder. So let's go ahead and open up After Effects Beta. All right. So just create a simple sequence, okay? You need to bring in a, a footage and then you're gonna make it into a composition. All right, so let's, let's sample some of this footage. I brought in a simple clip that I rendered out from one of my shots. This is my raspberry white claw going across the screen. I know that I'm gonna to wanna to cut out along the raspberries up the side of the can and around, and I wanna get rid of the background. Now you could do this with masks and you could do frame by frame with a mask and adjust the mask as you went along, which would probably take you hours to complete. This process with the Rotobrush 2.0 is probably 15 minutes, at least for this you know, four second clip, if that. So let's pull this down in here and open and make a new composition, okay? All right, so now that we've made a composition, we have a piece of footage in there, you can see right up here at the top, this is the Roto Brush tool, okay? It says drag over foreground. All right, so this is how I used it. You double click on this, which creates a layer, a layer tab. You're not in the composition tab, you're in the layer tab. So as you can see here, as I drag across, this is my Raspberry can okay now some people would be inclined to start roto brushing when the first raspberry comes in the screen either right there or start from the end and be like i'm going to start with this raspberry right there so what i found was roto brush 2.0 uses a ai algorithm to guess where to move that roto brush line to cut out the object using artificial intelligence 
if I start right here with this just this little piece of raspberry, there's just not enough information for the computer to go, okay, you want the raspberry, you want the can, you want the whole thing across. So I find a middle point, okay? Find a middle point to start with, and then I'm gonna go um, it forward in my timeline to the end, and I'm gonna come back to the middle, and I'm gonna go from the middle to the beginning of my timeline and get the rest of it roto brushed. So clicking on this roto brush tool, you have a green cursor here, okay? This is how you're gonna draw out your first roto brush. The first one you create is what the algorithm and the AI is going to use to determine what to do the rest of the time. So it's very important to do a good job on the first roto. So just in little pieces, I can grab little pieces of this can, okay? It'll start to fill out. Just do little lines, little lines, little lines. Don't try to just trace out the whole thing. Just do it in little sections. There, I know I'm gonna need that some of this go here like this go here there let's go down this can here all the way down to there around that one and around that one and that's good as you can see it's guessed the rest of it that was only maybe 10 strokes right over here in your effects controls i'm going to open this up just a little bit this you have version 2.0. Well, that's what you want to use because 1.0 really wasn't that great. And most people would have told you not to use Rotobrush and that it just doesn't work. 2.0 uses this new algorithm and artificial intelligence that just is amazing. 2.0 quality. Let's go with best. We want to have it guess and it's going to take a little more render time in between each frame, but it's going to use more processing power to make sure that it's using the correct um, Roto. So what's what's great is you can just go command and then hit your right button to go forward one frame and let it just guess it out. You just did it. There's your first frame. Do it again. First frame. You could hit the space bar and just let it go through, but I'd like to check my frames um, and just make sure that they're all good. So I'm just going to do a speed up version here. You can watch it happen on the screen. Um, I'm just going to click through this entire sequence to the end until the last raspberry, and you'll see how many adjustments I have to do, okay? Okay, so now that I'm getting down to my last few frames here, I am noticed that sometimes it needs a little bit of help. Let's see how it does on this one. Okay, so go back to here. You notice here it kept up with the raspberry. By this point, it started to take it away. So when you're creating these green lines for the roto, so you can hold down option and this gives you a, a, a subtraction and you can just go in here and clean that up a little bit. Oh, there we go. Click next. Next. That one needs a little help. Let's get rid of some of that. It's gonna go. Click next. And that's it. Probably took me about three or four minutes to click through all those frames. Now what I do is you can see this green line is what is rendered and what is propagated so far on the roto brush. Let's go back to the middle point where we started. As you can see, they're all there. All the lines stay with it. Oh, let's go right here to the middle. This is where we started. Now I'm going to go the reverse direction. I'm holding down command and I'm clicking to the left this time. And I'm just going to click all the way through this. Okay, so I'm going to speed this back up for you. You can see me go to the beginning. Okay, so now you've gone from each end. You started from the middle, you worked your way one way, you went back to the middle and you worked your way the other way, okay? So now if I slide through this, you can kind of see the propagation of all the roto all the way through the sequence, okay? So now what you wanna do is you're gonna hit this freeze button. The freeze button is gonna lock in that roto scope that you just made so nothing changes or it doesn't propagate new versions of the rotoscope.
All right, so now that After Effects has froze those rotoscope lines, nothing's gonna happen propagation-wise that's gonna change, okay? Now when you go from your Layer tab to your Composition tab, you can see that your shot is over a um, transparent background. Now, these edges aren't perfect, but this is something you didn't want to do until this point. You have a lot of roto brush matte like tuning options here. Okay, so you can throw a little bit extra feather on there. You can sh shift the edge a little bit to the left, which is what I like to do. Take a little bit more of that black out of there. That's what I use to create this. Now it's going to play it back and for me, the black edge isn't an issue because I'm having it over a black background anyways. I mean, if you wanted to fine tune that even more, maybe use a green screen or something else. But for what I was doing, I was able to have these cans go over, over in front of each other and it worked out great. All right, so now that we have this composition with our rotoscoped object on a blank background, we wanna take this and use it in Premiere Pro as its own layer or clip, okay? So let's go File, Export. I'm gonna use Render Queue inside After Effects, but you could take this over to Media Encoder if you wanted to. All right, so now I'm gonna look at the Output Module, okay? It's set to Lossless. Your main concern, because you want this to be an alpha mat, you want the background to not be there. You want to click Channels, RGB plus Alpha, okay? that's going to make that transparent background exist in the file. Now, I went to format, QuickTime is what I use on a normal basis, and then format options here gives you different codecs. I'm used to using Apple ProRes 422, right? I hit OK, well, I don't have that option for RGB plus alpha. So what I did is I kept that on the animation, and then put that to alpha. I hit okay. And this is how I rendered it out. Let's go ahead and render out this file. All right, that's it. You now can take that clip that you have rendered out and you can use it in a Premiere Pro timeline and anything behind it or below it in the timeline will be in the background. That's what I used to create those spinning can sequence at the beginning of my White Clock commercial. All right, so this has been just one part of the edit for my White Clock commercial. I'm gonna do this in a couple different series, all right? In the next video, I'm gonna show you how I composited three different cans coming into frame and how I made and cut out each one of those fruits. It's a little bit more complicated of a process and we're gonna look into that next week. So now I just wanna to speak to all the people that are still here. Thanks guys for supporting this channel so far. Last week, the White Claw commercial video um, surpassed 400 views for me. It was one of my top videos so far on this channel. Thank you to all the people that just subscribed to the channel and all the new viewers here. I'm excited to show you more content. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. I'm looking for ideas for a new product video. I'm not sure what product to, to do next. So if you have any ideas, put those down below as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go down below and hit that subscribe button. All right, go ahead and like this video. Leave me a comment, show some love, some support, and thank you again for being part of this community. This has been another Make Media tutorial. I'm Derek May, and we are out. Wait, stop, look, there's more things that you can still do. Look, if you minimize whatever video you're currently watching of mine, and you scroll down a little bit, there's gonna be this red subscribe button. You know what you do? You click it. Just check this out, ready, watch. It's it crazy. It goes from red to gray. Right? Blew my mind. I want you to check to see if yours goes from red to gray. And I want you to leave a comment down below if it did. And that's about it. Now that you now, now you're at the end of the video. Go on ahead and watch something else now.